Hello and welcome to an emergency episode of Islanders Anxiety. Joining me on this Monday evening via Zencaster is my friend, Michael Eboff. And Mike, what you and I and Islanders fans across the globe witnessed tonight is simply one of the most embarrassing playoff games in this franchise's history. Up 3 nothing in the second period, the Islanders stopped playing, let the Hurricanes back in, and ultimately the final score was 5-3 Carolina. Uh, just an absolutely brutal, embarrassing, just mind-bogglingly awful result. They are now down 2 nothing in the series, but that's almost secondary to the feelings of anger and frustration and helplessness that we're all feeling right now. Uh, what what are you feeling right now? The the gamut of emotions uh, that you've run through. I mean, the game has been over now for what fifteen twenty minutes, and I'm sure you you and all of us have experienced a lot. So where where are you at right now? Yeah, this is um, this is one that will uh, stick with everybody for forever. And and the the worst part of it is that you know it, you're you're in a familiar place, right? Like right. We've all been here before. We've watched this team do this hundreds of times in our lifetimes and hundreds of times seemingly this season. But it doesn't get any easier. And the worst part is like now you feel a little duped mm-hmm. that, you know, this team was um this was behind them. Um but yeah, I mean that sports fandom is all about moments and, and like the journey and there will be um there'll be ones that you just never forget. Um, and this, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm going to have a photographic memory of this, this night, uh, for the rest of my life. And, um, I will be haunted by, um, Shannon Hogan's voice right after the game ended going, well, Thomas, we're not going to sugarcoat this one. And, I, I just will never forget. It's still ringing in my ears. Um, I give you credit for even watching that far because as soon as <laughs> say, I just couldn't move after the game. Like I was, yeah, I was sitting amongst eyeless toys. So like, I mean, <laughs> if you had taken a, a still shot of me, you would just be like, I think this person's in a, um, you know, in, a, in an institution. Cause there's like a, <laughs> a unicorn next an inflatable unicorn next to him. He's in a, you know, I was in it wearing like a, my my terry, terry cloth Tony Sopranos jacket because they scored as soon as I put it on. <laughs> my my washing machine broke as Bo Horvat scored, and there was just smoke all over my house. I mean, it was Jeez. this was a, it was a disastrous night. Yeah, not not feeling too good. Um, yeah, there is no sugar coating going mm. on. I'm I'm pretty mad at the the New York Islanders. Yeah, I mean that's the only way to put it, and. Again, we we have coined many, many phrases this year, probably none more popular than playing like assholes. And boy, did they put on a clinic on how to play like assholes. And playing like assholes, in this case, meant getting three goals on 12 shots against a historically shaky playoff goaltender, and then just stopping. Freddie Anderson finished this game with nine saves on 12 shots. Think about that. Nine saves on 12 shots in a playoff game. And he won. He won yeah. the game. 5-3. <laughs> 5-3. I, the Hurricanes won. They didn't when when they pulled the goalie, I was like, why is it why are they even pulling him? Right. Right? Like the, the Islanders had one shot on goal for the last 30 minutes. Right. Why why I mean, did you even pull him at that point? It, it was a matter of time. And I think that's yeah. what you're getting at. Like we've seen this script before. Yeah. I mean, the, the hurricanes had 110 attempts to the Islanders, 30 something. What difference does it make? Like the Islanders stopped playing the game. They, they literally stopped and they had how many two minute shifts that they have in their own zone for the, in the second half of the game. Like the icings. Yeah. The, that was the, the, they were like, I don't, I have no problem with them trying to, you know, ice the puck to take the sting out of the game every now, especially against a team like this. But the amount of icings mm. with with no pressure mm. were killer. I'm and where what was Adam Pellick doing? And on I, the the, to, the game tying goal, he dropped his stick. Yeah, and then he's just like, "Oh, I gotta go get that stick." Like they, yeah. it, it was as if he thought 
Oh, they're gonna wait for me, right? They'll be they'll be yeah. they'll be polite while I go scoot over and pick up the <laughs> stick and leave my man wide open on right. the doorstep here in a playoff game that's t- we're up one by a miracle. Like a miracle. Right. This team plays every game as if it's the preseason. Every single one. And and he that was him dropping his stick. They right. broke four sticks I know. at one point. At at one point, they they had two consecutive penalty kills where somebody broke a stick. <laughs> and they mm-hmm. managed to get out of both of them, I think I th- they did give up one power play goal, but I think it was on a different one. But like this team plays every game as if it's the preseason. They just simply don't care. And I, I, as soon as that empty net goal was scored, I turned the game off. And I know there was some shenanigans at the end. Yeah, it's there embarrassing. Was whatever. It's, it's embarrassing. I, I, I don't care. I like they can be as mad as they want. They're not going to be as mad as we are at them right now. Because you guys and, and, and listen. This is, we literally recorded an episode yesterday praising their performance in game one and saying right. they played a good game. They, they fell the victim of bounces. It happens a lot when they play the Hurricanes. Play that way again and you'll get, you'll get a, a, you know, a, better, a better result, hopefully. They did not play that. They did not play. Even with the three nothing lead, they, didn't, they weren't playing particularly well. I mean, they, had, they, they counterattacked and that was good. Um, you know, the first period was the most even, but it wasn't really even. But to not recognize that you're up and if you just sit back and get sloppy and stupid for the next 30 minutes, you're going to cough up the lead is mind boggling. I know I use that word a lot, but it really is unbelievable that these professional athletes cannot be bothered to even try to prevent the other team from scoring goals. The one guy who I thought played a good game Simeon Varlamov was good until he wasn't. And I, I get the people are calling for Ilya Sorokin in game three. Sure, why not? The one guy who played well in this game once again was Kyle McClain, the fourth line set. He's the only guy I thought had a pretty darn good game. That's it. Everybody else, no. Like, I just, I, I just don't even know. I'm so angry right now. I don't even know where to even start. I really don't. It's unbelievable. It's, it's a good point, right? Like, Kyle McClain when Kyle McLean is the one dragging you into right to a fight. Like he almost, I don't want, it sounds, it's hyperbolic to say, but like he almost won that game for the Islanders. On his own. Right. He, yeah, he, he, he was the only one in the third period trying to score a goal. Yeah. He was the only <laughs> one who like, I tr- like, and he got double shifted. And, right. Yeah. He um, was with Barzell and hell and um, Horvat at one point. It's yeah. I, I, th- I think like it, you, if you are a, a New York Islander, and you're going home tonight, like you're, you're what? Like what are you even? Like what are you even thinking? I wouldn't even be. I'd be so like you said, embarrassed is the right word. Mm. You've got Patrick Waugh as your coach. It's been this whole thing about staying even keeled mm. and not not like taking your foot off the the pedal. And it's fine if you're like just being outplayed because the Islanders were out, like they were outplayed. That's mm. fine. But when you're outplayed like that it's a completely we're in a different universe um it's it's kyle mclean should like the hurricane should have taken him <laughs> right that, uh, after the game but like you you come with us like you you don't deserve to to go back to that to, to that to locker play, room to play like that at this time is unforgivable like yeah to play like that at this time is unforgivable for every team Right. To play like that at this time is unforgivable. If you're the team that somehow made the playoffs despite playing like that <laughs> 20 times this season. Mm. Right. How, like, it, what on earth what, or, was going on? I mean, I credit Robert Bortuzzo for laying it out there. Like, he, he was swimming out there at the end. Romanov, I thought, was fine. Like he, they, 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 it wasn't even an effort thing. Almost, it was like a, it was just like a cowardice, you know. It, it was, it was bizarre. It, it was, it was as if they, they thought there were like thirty seconds left. Yeah, for the Half last twenty eight minutes of that game, <laughs> um, and there, and you had the, the, you know what you said, like the McLean. Like I thought. Even like Clutterbuck and once again Clutterbuck and Martin were fine as I thought too. Yeah, I guess that's and true. Yeah, Martin was okay too. Yeah. Yeah, like but when they're 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 just doing their job, mm-hmm. the other guys is 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 what's the issue here? That the D was terrible. I mean, Noah Dobson clearly isn't a hundred percent. Yeah. Um, 
or he's got his phone back. He's he's really excited <laughs> maybe about like the, the Instagram posts of of the um the Isles wives and girlfriends jackets or something. I don't know. It was it was he he was pretty terrible. Mm. Um god man, it was it was just so bad and Yeah. It feels it feels like they were up 3 nothing mm. 6 hours ago. Yeah. That's how yeah. long that game took and um it took I think it took everything from Butchie he might have been stapled or like handcuffed to his seat up there <laughs> uh, to not go down there and just scream at all those guys. He was, he was me, as mad as we are. Part of me thinks Butch is a listener because he and I are exactly the same. Like he's yelling, you, you got to do something. You got to stand them up. You got to do. <laughs> I'm just, yeah. I'm saying the same thing. And in fact, it was so funny on uh, Monday's game. I didn't even mention this. Every time I said something, Butch would say the same thing. And my daughter and wife were watching the time. we like, Hey, wait a minute. I'm like, yeah, I know Butch and I are, are aligned here. Like I just, there are two more games in this series. And when I say that tonight was unforgivable, I understand that, you know, if they win on Thursday night and maybe even win on Saturday, you never know. The series is even and it's all different and everything. But there is, I I can't even almost imagine what it's like to think that that's even almost possible right now. Like how, how, how is that even possible? These guys are sloppy. They're slow. They're disorganized. They, they're. I mean, you might not think it's an effort thing, but it sure as hell looked like one to me. Like they, they, they don't have an answer for how to get into the zone tonight. They had one on game one. They had an answer. They were doing it. They were spending time in the hurricane zone. They were taking it to them. And tonight, they just decided to not do that again. I just, you know, and even if they did do that, and this was the whole problem we talked about after game one. Even if they did do that. There's no guarantee they win that game <laughs> because, you know, they're going to some bounce off of somebody's skull and it goes in and, you know, the Hurricanes win. Like, and, and this whole, the whole game was going exactly, you know, I've, I've seen the, the, the tide turn uh, in terms of like, you know, people's now people are caught on to the Hurricanes fans complaining about, about calls today. Jake Gensel, we have to mention this play. Jake Gensel's stick gets caught under Varlamov's mask literally yanks the that helmet off of Varlamov's head and Kane's fans are booing Varlamov putting the helmet back on like no he's allowed to wear a mask he's in fact he's supposed to wear it it's in the rules like what are we booing what do you do what did you want to, did you want his mask to get an interference penalty because Jake Gensel's stick got caught up and into it like what are you talking about it's it's unreal and there are still two more games of this nonsense that we have to watch yeah. and if Thursday is anything even almost like this, I'm not even going to watch on set. I just, I don't even care. Oh, yeah. if, <laughs> I don't, I don't Why? Care. You can call me whatever you want. I don't care. The, uh, yeah, the, I mean, I, that's the, the kicker here is like, I'm going to the game on Thursday. I've, I don't think I've ever been less excited to go to a, <laughs> a game, game. Maybe, let yeah. alone a playoff game in my life. Um, like how, how, maybe we'll just boo them coming out. You know, the, the crowd's supposed to be rocking the first no. playoff home game. Boo! Bye. Here, co- here come the New York Islanders. Boo! Yeah. Um, but uh, the the penalties early on too. That, that's the funny thing here yeah. is like there was a point where I'm like, well, the Islanders are up three nothing, and the, it feels like the refs are really trying to push the Hurricanes back into this game. Right. Um, and and it did feel that way. Like I thought the Barzell trip on Svechnikov was like, come on. And yeah, the, that was, was a little like, silly. There was like, there was a Pelic one that early in the game. I'm like, if you're gonna call that, you're gonna be calling a lot. Um, but then the Islanders, of course, weren't gonna get any whistles because they never had the puck. So it wasn't, right. it wasn't even yeah. that like that at all. Um, and then the Varlama of, you know, that that penalty when, look, I get it. You're you're trying to like send a message that this guy's just been camped in front of your net all night. <laughs> um. And you got Patrick Waugh behind your bench, so I'm sure he probably thought it was funny at the time. But it's clear where this, the ice is being tilted here. You just killed off a couple penalties. That's when the Islanders had looked like, wow, they might gut this thing out. Here's the tragedy of the whole thing. For for 30-something minutes, this looked like it was on track to being a gutsy, feel-good, proud win. Like one that right. you're going to be feel really, really proud of as an Islander fan. Get Get home 1-1 and... And be like, wow, that's my, that's my, the team. That's the team that, you know, I like to root for. They you can never count this team out, et cetera. All those great cliches. And that was just ripped from us by, by the, the guys we're rooting for. 
Um, so, uh, you know, it, it looked like there was going to be dis- uh, an against the odds, against the refs, against the bounces kind of win. And um, it, it weirdly changed on that, that penalty by Bar- Barlama. But still, you get to um, the, the third period, up 3-1. You kill another couple penalties, I think, earlier on in the third. Yeah. Um, the, yeah, the, the, the hurricane was actually score, okay. It, like, it, it was, was good. good. Yeah. And um, and the Hurricanes, the the first ten minutes of the third period were actually not bad. They weren't right in in relative to the rest of the game. They weren't bad. <laughs> um, but the Islanders get through the first ten minutes of the third period, still up three yeah. one. You're like, okay, you got to the te- you got halfway over. Like we're we're in a great position here. Um, you just need to keep it in front of us. And they 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 couldn't do that. It was a kind of like a weak dump in. Angval Lee couldn't really do anything with a puck. Then Bortuzzo gave too much space on the entry. And, you know, it was a great shot by Jarvis that I think flipped off of Bortuzzo's skate. And it it looked like if you went down, after that goal went in, if you went down the line, uh, if you lined up every single person that was watching that game and participating in that game, coaching in that game, you said, uh, who's going to win this game? Despite the fact that the Hurricanes were losing 3-2 with nine minutes left, I think each and every one of them would say hurricanes. Yeah. Um, including me, including you. And it was, <laughs> it was just so, um, inevitable. And, and when you're, when you're sitting there and you're watching it, knowing that in the back of your mind, and you, you, you know, that, um, future you, like you could already see future you, I could see future me going to bed sad waking up tomorrow and being like why am i why am i already in a bad mood oh yeah that's right the islanders lost the most embarrassing game you'll you'll ever lose in a playoffs that's why i'm already mad at everybody in, in the world um you know like you, you're watching you're, you already see yourself doing it it's yeah. so it's an out-of-body experience almost and one that we're the only fan base dealing with tonight so it's 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 pretty lonely here oh and of course there's the kicker right like mm. Hey everybody, get ready to root for these guys in a week. You know, like we're gonna have to get, we're just gonna have to turn this, turn this ship around and be like the biggest Canes fans ever when they play the freaking Rangers. So, <laughs> hope, hope, hope you, hope you weren't, weren't getting too mad at, at Jake Gensel and and whoever else at the end of the game when they were shoving with Almeri and Nelson because you're gonna be rooting for those guys. I mean, I was mad at the Hurricanes through most of the game. And then as the tide turned and like, as you said, it became inevitable that the Islanders were going to lose the game. I became more mad at the Islanders. And right now I'm a hundred times more mad at the Islanders than I am at the Hurricanes. Oh, I know. Yeah. Like I, I just, and now it, uh, some quotes are coming out from the post game stuff. Anders Lee said that one fucking hurts. Direct quote from Anders Lee. Yeah, I bet it does. I mean, you were there. You could have done something about it. <laughs> like why didn't anybody do something about it? Why didn't anybody stop it while it was happening? Why not spend some time in the hurricane zone? Why not get a shot on net? They had two shots on net for half a game. That's not how it's going to work. I just, I, I don't know how these guys come back from this. And, I, and again, I say that knowing full well that they have two games left to play. Right. So, it, you know, it, it's, it, it feels impossible. Like it feels it, impossible. It, yeah. Yeah. And, and it's, it would have been impossible down to the, the, the hurricanes of Stanley cup favorite. They're really good. They, they played a yeah. lights out game tonight. One of the most dominant performances you'll see. Um, and what, so going down to nothing to that team is already, you know, huge right. hill to climb. And then you throw in the fact that they lost this game in this fashion. And I'd be like, I, I would, if I was an Islander, I'd just be like, I don't really want to, I don't want to go to work on yeah. Thursday. <laughs> you know, I'm not, I'm going to call in sick because, uh, dude, I, can you imagine going back out there? Hmm. I, I mean, I know these guys are professional athletes and their, their, their lives have been completely different from us, but boy, it'd be like going to a, like a work happy hour <laughs> and getting absolutely blinding drunk. Yeah. And then going to work on Monday. Yeah. So stupid. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like so stupid, right. like being an asshole. Yeah. Saying a bunch of stupid shit to people. You piss in the fountain out front of the restaurant right, or yeah. something like that. Yeah, everyone see, every, yeah, everyone sees you naked or something. Right, you know, while you're doing it, like there's no nothing, there's nothing left to hide. Mm. Um, and then on Monday, you, yeah, you got to go back to work uh, with all these people because that's that's what it feels like here. Yeah. And the problem is like 
when you're a fan that ex- that extends to you and you have nothing you can't do anything about it so it's almost right. like we're the friend we're like oh yeah we're you know i'm yeah i'm good friends with islanders over here like he's yeah. he's he's really cool and then he acts like that and you're like god damn it i i'm the one who brought him mm. to this bar and now i gotta go to the i gotta go to that meeting on monday too it's gonna be just as it's almost more embarrassing right. here because we're 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 choosing like they they are they don't have a choice Mm. they just the, are the new york islanders we're the ones who are rooting for them and and yeah. have made them a part of our lives on purpose um so <laughs> um it's it's almost worse for us and more embarrassing for us uh, yeah. when you know that the the heat that's coming your way is just going to be mm. totally deserved and um yeah I'm, boy uh well, well he, here's the real problem for the islanders like you, that that analogy is 100 percent correct but the thing is when they come out on, on the UBS arena ice on Thursday, the first errant pass or first unforced icing that they get, they're going to hear boots. The people are going to start booing. Come on. What are we doing? What are we doing? Why are we doing this? How are we doing? This? Why don't we get a shot? Why don't we try, you know, why don't we push the play a little bit? And they're going to be, they're going to be earned. And if they're going to get rattled by their own home fans in a playoff game, when they're down two nothing good, like, we have put up with all this garbage all season long. And again, we talked about what well, we talked about in the last episode, but we talked about in the episode before. And the point that you made that I thought was very, very sharp was that all that crap that we went through in the regular season was over now. It's done. We don't have to worry about the Sharks loss or the Devil's loss or the Stadium Series loss or whatever loss has been. You're calling that one, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> no, but you, but you were right. Like, we can put all that stuff away. Well, guess what? Now we've got two more incredibly frustrating losses to hang on to <laughs> this is game one, which again, they played well, just a couple of bounces went the wrong way. And now this, and yeah. I just, you know, I yeah. Mean, how about that? That's, you know, it's a brilliant point, right? Like it's, it's taken them two games <laughs> to give us more. Yeah. Two more <laughs> to, to, to just to, to completely to throw, to throw us right back over the ship. Good God. Yeah. Like you you think it would be like they oh yeah, they they got to game six and then shit the bed like they did last year or the game right. seven in Washington a couple of years yeah. ago and um Yeah. If but, they get to no, a game just, seven now, that that's a miracle. Like No, I mean I mean I I would I, I think if the Islanders are playing past game five in this series, because maybe they you know, maybe they get a lucky win down three nothing. If if honest I I'll let me even Rephrase that. If they win on Thursday, I think that would be the most surprised I've ever been at a sporting event in my life, <laughs> at, at, at a result of, from a sporting event. Because, and I, and we've seen, we've all seen crazy stuff um, in our lives. We've seen huge upsets. And if I, when, when you consider everything that just went on, um, I, I cannot picture it. Um, mm. I, and I'm assuming Sorokin's going to play. Uh, so good luck to Ilya. Um, as, mm. as he deals with whatever 82 shot attempts from the hurricanes, if hopefully, you know, that, that would be a good performance compared to this one. But, um, yeah, I don't, I, I, I cannot imagine, I can't even picture what an Islander win would look like anymore, yeah. um, in this series. And, and it sucks, man. This is the, the worst part about the playoffs. Cause, um, yeah, the, the, uh, the players are the ones who are supposed to stay even keeled, right? Like mm. as a fan, it's, you're, you're on the roller coaster. You're, you're right. touching the the highs and you're touching the lows. Um, so you're supposed to stay, they're staying, you're supposed to stay even keeled. We're not, but uh, fr- sa- Saturday at like, you know, 4.57 PM, it, hope was eternal. Hope sprung eternal. And mm. we're not even what, we're, we're just about 50 something hours later. And I hate these guys so much. Yeah. So that's, that's the playoffs, man. That's what we fought. For, right like that's what <laughs> what we the, the, the great run that the, the yeah. islanders put together to get it get into the tournament like this is this is where it led to which is yeah you know just a whole other thing entirely so it's um man yeah. you know we we always say on the show like we always warn about rebuilds and stuff but maybe we should just rebuild eternally because it's so much better than i mean at least you don't have to deal with this right i i you know if you're just bad for years after year after year uh sure you think you want to be in the playoffs, but you really don't. You don't want yeah. to deal with this <laughs> when you're the Islanders. Like I mean, it's completely different for 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 a lot of, for basically every other team. Like they're not they don't yeah. do stuff like this, but the Islanders do. So it's a it's a approximately an hour and fifty minutes 
from Raleigh to JFK, right? Assuming they fly into JFK, I'm sure flying into LaGuardia is not all that different or, or uh, whatever, you know, uh, MacArthur or whatever it is. What, what do you think these guys say to each other in that almost two hours in the air where they have nothing but time to think about what just happened? Like, I, I don't think they're going to say anything. No, I think they're I, just going to pat I, each other on the shoulder and be like, oh, man, oh, that really stunk. And they're just going to do it again. They've yeah. done this now 84 times <laughs> this season under two different coaches, with a bunch of different players and a bunch of different goalies and a bunch of different, you know, Scott Mayfield used to be here. And now he's hurt. Now we have Bortuzzo and Riley Bortuzzo, by the way, he, he laid down so early before Jarvis took that shot that he could have taken a nap. You know, that's, that's the, the Andrew McDonald special right there where you lay down so early <laughs> that the other guy has a, has a chance to like kind of, aim the puck over your body because you're already down, you know, for the count, Butch, Butch almost lost it at that too. But like, I don't expect these guys to change a damn thing. Why would we expect them to change anything? They haven't, they haven't done that. And listen, like they did this in the stadium series game and then somehow managed to, which we also called like an unforgivable loss or whatever, or something like along those lines. And then they managed to turn it around and make the playoff, but they don't have a 20 game cushion left. They have two. They have to win a game on Thursday. And I don't think they're going to do it. I think, and in fact, here's what I'll even say. I think they'll play really well. I think they'll come out. They'll play really well. They'll maybe be tied in the third period. And then some stupid bounce will happen. And the hurricanes will walk out with a three, nothing leading series. I mean, is that the most, is, do you see that? Yeah, as I mean, maybe the most we, obvious thing that happens. Yeah. I, you know what it is too. It's, 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 we're back into that suspended animation, suspended yeah. emotion part of, of being an Islander fan where, like would would I even be happy if the Islanders score a goal on Thursday to go up one nothing? No, no, I'm not gonna be. I'm not gonna be happy until the the buzzer, the the final right. horn rings, right? Like, and that's how I felt tonight. I was texting our friend Kerry Haber after the the Islanders went up three nothing. I was like, it's zero zero. Yeah, like, this game is clearly zero zero right now because the the yeah. way this thing is 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 trending. Uh, was, my wife is sitting next to me on the couch, and I said, you know, they're up three nothing, but that for a normal team that would be great, but this is not a normal team. Yeah, and an hour later, they were, the game was over and they lost. Yeah, you you almost just wanted to be like, can we just fast forward through the <laughs> the the meaningless kind of like shots off the post from the Hurricanes and stuff? Can we just let's just not even right. deal with that. Can you just show me the two goals that they're going to score to tie this thing up here, and yeah. we'll we'll go from there. Um, but um, yeah, I, I'm not, I'm not even gonna be I, like, am I gonna be happy that they they go up one nothing? No, I'm gonna be I'll be happy if they they win. Sure. You know, then then I can start to get sucked back in a little bit again with with the utmost caution. You know, and and I I tend to to be a, an outright fibber when it comes to uh, the Islanders, and you know, I I give up on them, and then the next day I'm like, okay, I'm hmm. starting to believe again, whatever. Um, I'm and I'm saying this knowing I'm probably lying once to everybody once again, but if they if they somehow pull off the miracle and win on Thursday. I'm I'm walking out of that building. I'm not gonna be happy. I'm just gonna be like, you know, I'm yeah, sad. I'm gonna be sad, yeah. <laughs> which is which is what a place to be in as a fan. Oh, the yeah. Islanders won. How does that make you feel? You're an Islander fan. Pretty pretty bummed actually. <laughs> yeah, like no, I'm 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 right with you. Like let's let's say they win. Let's say they win convincingly. You know, four one. Let's just say it's a very yeah. you know they play really well. Maybe the Hurricanes don't have it or whatever. They you know. And they win, they win a, a, a not going away, but like they win a comfortable game or at least comfortable for the Islanders. That's not going to be a good feeling because you never know what's going to happen on Saturday. Saturday's a matinee. It's even worse. And you just know that this torture has been extended for another game on Tuesday yeah. in Raleigh. And, and like imagine Patrick Watt too, like being like, I, you know, I took, I took this job. Yeah. I really thought I could take this, you know, this, this is the team I think I could identify with. And, and build on, um, man, he's got to be broken now. He's be like, well, I'm sure that a lot of people are like, yeah, you don't want to get involved with this team. It's got nothing to do with the players. They're all nice guys. They're all godfathers to one another's kids. And <laughs> you'll see them at the the grocery store, and it's it's quaint. It's nice. Mm. Good, got a lot of good pizza, good bagels. Beach is mm. there. There's those are nice, but. There's there's just something there's something uh, nefarious in the air with this team. So, and it's not like I said, it's just the the team. It's not it's the Islanders. It's not these specific players. It's just there's something there 
that will mm. always be there waiting to um to haunt you. Yeah. And he's learning that now. Yeah. Um because you know, if if you had a sit down conversation with Patrick Wa and you're like and he's like, Hey, yeah, oh really? You you weren't you weren't ecstatic that they were up three nothing in that game? Like that we were up three nothing? <laughs> why weren't you happy? I'm like yeah. Well, now you know why. Because nothing matters until it's in those two points are in our pocket or the win is in our pocket mm. and when you get when you come to this island, right? That's just that's just how it goes. So um I, I, you know, I, I'm still withholding my opinion on Wa. He got here, he got him to the playoffs. I mean, there's something to be said for that, but I mean, this is now under two coaches that we've seen this kind of stuff. And that means that either these players are uncoachable and they are locked into whatever they are, or Wa was uh, Im- immediately admitted into the country club. And he's just totally cool with all this too. And I don't want to like, I don't want to think either one of those, but he hasn't really changed a whole lot about how they play. I mean, he, he did it first. Remember they, they looked different. They were pushing play. They were doing things differently. And then that stopped. And then they did it again. And then that stopped. And now there's this. And again, one, you know, Saturday's game, they look good. And now this, so I, I don't know. I don't know what else to do with these guys. Um, a couple of quick shout outs to, to specific people right off the bat. I'm, I'm at lighthouse hockey right now. And God bless Dom for writing the, the recap of this and, and longtime lighthouse commenter Afro Supreme is using the Dennis green. They are who they thought who, they are, who we thought they were gif. Uh, and that's right. They are who they thought we were. <laughs> that's what the Islanders are. They are who they thought we were. If you want to crown them crown. Them. That's uh, the great, the late great Dennis green right there. Uh, also shout out to um, the biggest loser on Twitter, Dom decision of the, Athletic, who decided to uh, search out our friend Rat Martin on Twitter just to troll him after the Islanders' loss. That is very professional behavior by a, a, a journalist, not a fan, a journalist. So, enormous loser. I can't even begin to, <laughs> to, 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 to wrap my head around that. Um, but uh, I also want to shout out a, a, a person who, um, who, who replied to me, uh, Marco, who said, thank God the Jets draft is on Thursday so I don't have to watch the Islanders again. That's what it's come to. People now want to watch the NFL draft to see who the Jets take instead of watching the Islanders. So, Marco, I don't blame you. I'm not making fun of you. I'm making fun of these guys. Like, <laughs> I, think, I can never imagine choosing to watch the NFL draft over an Islanders playoff game. But this year, yeah, I can see that. Why wouldn't you? Sure. Can't, it, it, it's not going to be as painful. That's for sure. <laughs> it's crazy. They, they've, ruined, they've ruined it. They've ruined the yeah. carnival. They've ru- the, the playoffs are fun. They're supposed to be yeah. fun, like going to playoff games. I love going, love mm. going early and whatever. And I'm, I can't, I cannot, I would, I'll be so disappointed in myself if I start getting my hopes up on Thursday before mm. this game. That would be yeah. so disappointed in myself. I would have let myself down if I'm not just going to that game because <laughs> I'm just, I'm got, I'm, I'm, I've got tickets right. Like, yeah. um, yeah. But this is supposed it's, to be the fun time. This is when right. you're supposed yeah. to want to go. Exactly. And, yeah. I, I. I wouldn't, I usually like, I, I haven't missed a playoff game in years and, mm. um, a home one really. And, uh, yeah. now, uh, yeah, I, I would much rather just not be going, <laughs> but, um, yeah. So, uh, it, it's, it's really tough. I don't, uh, Anders, I'm actually pretty happy that leave is like, yeah, this is, you know, I don't have the words for it. Cause that's exactly how I feel. Like mm. you, you, they have no choice. Like, and we have no choice either. Like we're going to be there on Thursday, um, watching this team, uh, mm. unfortunately, and they're going to be there playing as this team. Um, and and I will say, Andersley has stopped cosplaying as Andersley and has started playing like Andersley lately, True. which is actually being making it even more sad. Like <laughs> they're getting they're getting some some solid efforts. It feels like from from guys that they didn't get solid seasons from. His goal and, tonight was fantastic. Yeah. Classic Anders Lee. Right in it's, front, by himself, turn around, jam at home. Yep. Yeah. And that look on his face afterwards, I was like, oh yeah. my God, that was that was awesome. But then uh they scored in the last minute of a period. Like <laughs> they got uh, some Horvat could have had two in that in that he had yeah. a breakaway too that he just barely missed. So yeah. So yeah, it's um <laughs> man, it's pretty not good. Um uh, and yeah, the life has just been sucked out of, of the playoffs. It's so funny to see all these people being like, oh, the NHL playoffs just like ejected in my veins. No. Yeah. 
get this stuff yeah. away from me as far away from me as possible <laughs> tomorrow is tomorrow is yeah. going to be a day where i'm going to try so hard just to avoid anything yeah. but um i, I come it's yeah this game please oh. do not inject this game if you inject this game into my veins i hope yeah, it's a lethal injection and i'm just right. and you just put me out of my misery because i do not want this anymore all right i think we are we have exhausted ourselves we're tired we're angry I'm going to go eat some cookies. Uh, <laughs> you can go, I don't know, uh, clean up Isla's toys or whatever. Maybe <laughs> put put, uh, put your mind at ease, get get you know some other kind of activity going there. And uh, we'll see uh, what happens on Thursday. Uh, any final thoughts uh, before we uh, close the book on this one? I don't think so. <laughs> Me neither. I'm not even going to do the whole ad read. You, got, yeah. you guys know it all. Patreon. Uh, Lighthouse Hockey, Vintage Ice Hockey, Pino Project, you know everything. Morning Haze, you guys have it all. Uh, and uh, yeah, we'll talk to you again on Sunday after game four. Is it the final game of the Islanders season? Could yes. be. <laughs> One vote let's for hope, yes. Let's, let's hope so. Let's it's hope possible, so. yeah. I mean, you might be doing us all a favor, honestly. But but maybe they maybe they even the series. And, you know, we have a whole different tenor at that time. So. We'll see, but for right now, uh, certainly looks like we're we're halfway towards uh, the golf course. Okay, uh, we hope this has helped. Probably didn't, but whatever you're feeling, I promise you, we are feeling it too. So there you go. That's all. That's the best I can do for you. And we will talk to you in a few days. We're actually recording our mailbag episode for the Patreon tomorrow, so that'll be a lot of fun. Uh, if you haven't gotten your question in, do it now. Sign up for the Country Club tier and get a question in. We'll answer it tomorrow on the podcast. All right, enjoy. Game three and four, if you can. And uh, hopefully the Islanders will uh, make us enjoy them. All right. Thanks a lot. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.